Okay, next after the legs are finished, so the finished legs should have your identification marks on, uh, back right, back left, front left, front right, okay, and all your mortises drilled in place on all of them. After that's done, then it's time to start working on the aprons. Get those out of the way. So what I want you to do um, is go to the aprons page and then mill these four pieces to the finished size. Now, it seems odd, but there are three different finished sizes. Okay? And the aprons are the part that go from leg to leg to leg. They hold the legs together basically and make the rectangle. Okay, so that's what we're building now. So I want you to mill those four to the finished sizes. Okay, now that you have all four of your aprons cut to finish size, milled to finish size, now we're going to take the front one out and we're going to work with it right now. It's the one that's 76 mils wide, it's a little wider than the others. And the reason for that is because we're going to have to do some cuts on this so that we can actually create a rectangular hole in here that will allow the drawer to go in and out. Okay, it's going to be the drawer opening. So get the front piece and we'll show you how to lay that out. Okay, so the best way to do this, clamp your front piece with the end facing you. And what we have to do is we have to make two lines along here, 12 millimeters down, so right across here. So I'll show you how to do that. So measure down 12 mils. And at this edge, let's measure 12 mils here. Take your square, a line across there, make a line across right here so you can see it easier, a line across here. Mark an X on the waist side, which is going to be to the inside of that line. Okay, so once you're marked out like that, Okay, then we are good to go to the table saw and cut. Okay, we have our piece marked, and that's kind of a, a double check in a way. So, what I want you to do next, set your table saw fence to 12 millimeters. Get the skinny push stick. Okay, it's just a little skinny one. Okay, that's the one we're going to use to cut this. Turn your saw on. I've got the blade I set already. Keep this piece. We're going to need it. So we just cut, we just cut that one. Now we're going to cut this one. Okay, now that you've uh, cut your drawer front, cut the strips off it, we're now going to use the middle piece. We're going to cut 100 millimeters off each end. So let's do that right now. So accurately measure your 100 mils. Right there from that end, X on the waist side, 100 from the other end. X on the waist side. The waist side is the center. Okay, we want these to be exactly 100. Okay, from the end in 100, from this end in 100. Mark that with your square. A 
line this up. Okay, now that you have your pieces uh, cut, you have your opening there, we now have to glue it all back together. So, make sure you have your pieces, the booklet, wet paper towel, dry paper towel. Use this small F clamps, the light duty F clamps. We don't need a lot of clamping pressure, but grab, uh, grab four of these just in case you need a couple of extra, right? Usually it works with two. And the glue, of course. And then I'll show you how to glue this up. Okay, grab your pieces here, spread them out, keep everything nice and orderly. Now we want to put glue on the block. So, get your glue, put a little bit on there, like so. Remember to spread it right to the edges. Okay, 100% coverage. Put that one in place. Then, do this one, same thing, spread it to all edges, okay. put it in place, flip it up, or whatever works best for you, we have to get glue on this side as well. the glue out okay. and again you have to work fast glue uh, glues on its own schedule it likes to uh, dry fairly quickly especially on warm days like it is today okay clean your fingers because now you're going to be handling this some more put that on top like so drop it down get everything lined up best you can if it's not perfect at the ends, it's not too big of a deal, but uh, if you can get it perfect, great. Okay, take your clamps, put them on, again, roughly in the center of this, to get equal distribution of the pressure, hold everything in place, and just snug that up, just, just a little bit. Remember, this is just holding it, the clamps are really just holding it still. We're not squeezing it together so much. It does a little bit of that, but for the most part, it's just holding it to prevent it from moving. Once you have it like that, then let it dry for about 10 minutes, then clean your squeeze out off, and uh, then we'll take you to the next step. So there you go. There's your uh, apron with the drawer opening cut in it. Now it's time to start fitting your aprons into the legs, okay? So we're going to make a joint and it's, they're going, going to fit together. So this is the mortise, this is going to be what's called the tenon, and it's going to be done very accurately. So take your time, use a sharp pencil, accurate readings from your ruler, and a square. I'll show you how to do that right now. All right. So the best way to lay this out is to put it in a vise, uh, just so you can use you know, both hands on the square and the ruler and your pencil. I'm sure you use a sharp pencil. I'll try and make fairly heavy darks so you can see it more clearly in the video. Just like with the mortises, uh, we want to put our tenon in the center of our piece of wood. So you have to measure it and find your center, okay, right there, another tick down here. And extend those so you have your center line, like that. Then what you need to do is our mortise is 3 eighths of an inch wide. Half of 3 eighths is 3 sixteenths. 
So we'll measure over 3 sixteenths. I've shown you how to do this before. Just go to, let's say, 9 inches or whatever you want to use. Um, put that on your center line and then count 1, 2, 3 sixteenths. 1, 2, 3 sixteenths. Then you can also make your line in this fashion using a square. Okay, I'll do it this way so you can see it better. Make sure the reference foot is tight against that edge. Draw your line and draw your line. There you go. Okay, don't worry about making any lines in this way or this way. The other thing, the one other thing we have to do is we have to measure uh, 20 millimeters in from the end and we have to put that all the way around our surfaces and edges like that so like so like so now after you have completed this show it to me just show me this one and I can perhaps save you a bunch of time so that you don't have to do each end. Okay, so do it nice and accurate and that's typically what uh, gives you kind of a pass on this and you can go ahead and, and you won't have to do all the others. You won't have to draw out all the others. So there you go, there's your tenon drawn out. Now that you've been given the go-ahead, it's now time to cut these tenons and we're going to do that. I'm going to show you this way in the dado blade right now um, and you can use this if it's free. If not, we can use a different technique uh, using the tenoning jig and it's in the mortise and tenon uh, video uh, that you perhaps watched already. But if you want a refresher, take a look. Uh, but for this one, this is showing you how to do the tenons with the dado blade. So, you want to have a leg handy because we're going to have to check it for fit. And what we're going to do, we're going to get that out of the road right now. Actually, first thing we should do, set your blade height. So, get your blade height set to the lower line. Okay, so get it set to this line here. Okay, to get the blade positioned to the proper height, put your board in place. Rotate the blade until you have a tooth right at center. So that's that CL line right there. And the top of that tooth should be right on your line. Okay, or just on the underside of it, if anything. Okay, if you're really accurate, you can actually cut your line. You can split it in half. Okay. So be really accurate with this setup and that'll help your tenon quality. Okay, which I'm at right now. Then we have to set our miter gauge. And we want our line to be right on the edge of a tooth. Okay, move this over. Flip that stop down and then I like to just do a double check. To make sure your tenons work out nice and accurately make sure you set the tool accurately. So have a very sharp pencil to draw your line and then just get that line on the edge of the tooth. Okay, That's where it's going to cut. So be really accurate with lining all this up. And that looks really good. Make sure that's snug. Just check again. Felt like it moved. No, it's okay. So now what you're going to do is this is going to be kind of our guinea pig, this one right here. So we're going to cut just this one tenon and then we're going to check it for the fit into the mortise. So let's fire this off. Hold down firm. It's going to want to lift up. So hold down. Push this through. Go slow, you'll get a nicer cut. Okay, go past, pick it up with your left hand, pull the miter gauge back, and let's go all the way around.
biggest problem people have is not putting it all the way down to the stopper. Make sure it goes to the stopper. You set it for a reason. There we go. Wait for that to stop. Got a little bit hanging on there. That should probably just break off. Like so. Okay. Then let's check if it's going to fit. And it fits nice. It should just get in there. Just slide in there. We have to allow a little bit of room for the glue, but you don't want it sloppy. You don't want it any smaller than a millimeter less than this. But sometimes you have to sneak up. If it was too big, if it wasn't fitting in there, okay, then we would just adjust the blade to come up a little bit. If it was too small, we'd have to lower the blade. Okay, and that's some playing around. So try and get it pretty darn close the first time. Okay, and once that's done, you can do all the short ones. Okay, now that you've finished uh, both ends of the two side aprons, okay, both ends need a tenon, okay, they're going to fit into the legs. We can put those off to the side. Don't, don't change the blade height or anything. Just leave the blade height exactly like it is. The only thing we have to change for doing the back and the front pieces are we have to just change the, uh, the stop so that it doesn't go quite as far. So I've marked it out on one of these. That's all I have to do. I'm going to loosen this off, move it over, bring that right up to the tooth again. Any tooth will do. Any of the outside teeth will do. Get that lined up. Bring your stopper over. Okay. And then just do a double check. And that's all there is to it. Okay. I'll show you that. This one's pretty much the same as what you've done before. Doing the front. Okay. It's just a little different. Just on hand positioning. So again, all you're going to do. Make sure you get some pressure down. So. Manipulate your fingers, but you do have to get pressure down so this doesn't lift, okay? That one. Uh, just how we do the tenon for the front and the backs. The backs done exactly the same as the front. Once all your tenons are cut, now we have to kind of coordinate things so that it always goes together the same way. So we already have our front right. So I've put everything kind of in place. And what I want you to do is I want you to identify each joint. So let's mark this one an A. So that's the A mortise. And this will be the A tenon. B. B. C. C. And so on. D. E. F. G, H, that's it. Okay, so get that coordinated and then we'll move along. Once everything is coordinated, okay, we have our A there, we have our A on top of our leg there. It's hard to see, but everything has been labeled. And that's going to be very important on coordination because these are all going to look the same. So, if we get things in the wrong place, it doesn't work very well and your joints don't fit tight. So, once you're coordinated, then I'm going to show you how to fit the tenons. We'll start with A. Now, we want to get this tenon fit into this mortise. Okay? And we want it to be flush to the top. So, the top of the apron is flush to the top of the leg. 
So in order to do that, mark your lines across. We'll make this one a little longer, actually. And the same with this one. Okay, and that's the length of your tenon or your mortise. Take your apron, make sure it's flush right here. Okay, like that. You don't want it protruding like that, and you don't want it recessed like that. So you get it, your tops even, like so. Then, on your ends, make a little tick where the line is, and make a little tick where the line is. Okay, and then we're going to cut those. So clamp your apron in the vise. You can see our little ticks right here. We're going to extend those with our square, like that, and like this. Now we don't have to take very much off here, but uh, we have to because it's not going to fit in. Take a ruler, make a line straight up there, just rest it down on the shoulder of your tenon. Do it there. And do it at the back here as well on this piece and this one here. Then take a dovetail saw. Easiest way to use a dovetail saw, start at the heel, okay? Have it at an angle like that, starting at the heel and pull back. That'll make a groove, small groove. Then flatten it out a little bit, pull back again. Now you have a nice groove there. Start at the heel, get it flat, and cut down to the shoulder. Like that. Don't cut too far, you cut into the apron. Turn your saw sideways like so. Some of you will be tempted to use a file. A file won't do a good enough job. This will be more accurate. And square, and it'll hold better. All right. So, once we've cut that, then let's check it. A with A. And you can see that it fits in and it fits flush here. However, oh no, we don't have a gap there. That's pretty good. We do run into other problems. If, if this is happening, if you have a space like that, it's one of two things, or three things basically. Either you haven't cleaned out uh, your mortise well enough and there's something preventing the tenon from going all the way in, or the tenon, the tenon is too long, it's longer than the depth of the mortise, okay, that's one problem, or you have a shoulder that is preventing the tenon from going all the way in. And we have a slight shoulder here, probably not enough to cause much problem. Okay, but if that's the case, look and see what the problem is. You might have to clean out, you may have to clean out your mortise a little bit better at the bottom with the chisel like we showed you before. Okay, this little process like that. Okay, do that, make sure that's clean. Then you can actually use the chisel to check the depth of your mortise. We don't need to know what it is numerically, so I put a chisel in there. Make a line on the chisel, take it, put it up against your tenon. We can see that there's plenty of room there. That's not a problem at all. And if there are shoulders protruding, I'll clean these ones off a little bit. Put, put your pro, the apron in the vise and just clean that up a little bit. Okay. And again, don't use a file. Okay. Files don't work very well for this kind of thing. We need something rigid like this, cutting edge on it. Okay, if everything is cleaned up and the right length and the shoulders are removed, you should end up with a nice tight fit like that. And that's going to make for a nice strong joint. Uh, that looks really good. There, and that's how we fit. So three things. Clean out the mortise. Check the depth or the length of your tenon and check that you don't have any shoulders protruding between this right usually it's right in this transition area right in here and you'll be able to see it there you go give that a try
once you finish doing all your fitting, put your project together. Just a, it's called a dry setup. It's kind of like a rehearsal before we glue it. And then I want to see it. We just want to check your corners. So get it all set up. Grab some light duty F clamps. The easiest way to do this is make sure your pad is basically going to be where you want the pressure, straight in line with your mortise and tenons. So we're going to go like so. I like to lay the clamp down. It makes it a little easier to, to handle. Again, don't reef on this, just finger tight. And do the other one. Again, just finger tight. If you reef on it too much and make it too tight, it's uh, going to pop and it's not going to it's not going to be held square. So again, this just finger tight, you guys, not tight at all. Just enough to hold it together, but not to squeeze it together. Okay, and it should look something like that. Then have me come over and take a look and we'll assess it. I can see one thing right here on H, it's a little low. So I'll have to see, I might have to try, oh no, it was just a gap, okay. So we just have to make sure everything's flush across the top, flush, 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 flush. Everything is looking good and square. So since we're at this point, maybe just get a tape measure and check diagonals from corner to corner. They need to be within about three millimeters of each other. Okay, so that direction I have 712 mils. You kind of have to do this with a tape measure. And I have 713 mils, so we can live with that. Okay. Everybody should be a little bit different but get it as accurate as you can because that makes a big difference when we go to make the drawer and the top. Okay, next step we will uh, take it apart and glue it. Now that you've had your tenons and everything checked out, it's now time to glue. So go get a glue brush. Glue brushes are usually kept over by the sink. Uh, if you can't find any over there, come and see me and I'll get you one. Okay, so we're just going to do the sides right now. So pull everything apart, again, keeping everything nice and orderly. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to actually um, paint, on the, paint the glue on the inside of the mortise. That way it prevents a whole bunch of squeeze out. So everything coordinated, have your clamps ready, have your glue, have your wet paper towel and dry paper towel. So the way I like to do it, we're doing, going to do B, is I will hold the leg at an angle, I'll put a bead of glue down there. Then I'll hold it the other way, put a bead of glue down there. Then I'll take my glue brush and I smear it all over the side walls of your mortise. And then I do it again, just to be on the safe side, and make sure I haven't... Uh, missed any. Okay. So it's hard to see, but I'll show you one of these as well. But we're looking for something along that line. Put that down. Then we're going to do A. So, glue. And again, we have to work fast. So be ready to work fast. Be coordinated, have your clamps and everything at the ready. Second coat. Second coat. There we go. Put A and A. B and B. And then apply your clamping pressure. Right where you want it. Right in the center. Like you did when you did your dry setup. Okay. Now... Check the good side. Make sure you don't have any glue squeeze out. Doesn't matter if we have squeeze out on the on the inside. Okay, that won't be seen. There we go. You can see that clamp's not very tight. It's just holding it in position. Now we'll do this one again real quick. 
Okay, so F, F, E, E. Glue, glue. And second pass, or second coat. Glue's getting kind of all over the brush. I'll just scrape it off. There, there's F. And we'll do, what are we doing here? E. So E, right there, right there. Second coat. That and like that. Okay. Brush off a little bit. Lay that down. Flip it over if you want. You can work good side up this time. Get your clamp and put it nice and centered. And put the clamp on. Again, clamp's fairly loose. It's just holding things still. All right, we'll give those a few minutes and then we'll do the front and back. Now that the sides have uh, been clamped and glued, it's time to do the front and the back. So we're going to join the two sides. You may need to uh, talk to one of your classmates, you might need an extra set of hands on this. So it's not quite as easy to manipulate because now we've got clamps and we've got more pieces all clamped together. So we still need to get glue in here, so whichever way works best for you. We want to do that two coats again, so I'll just choose one side and smear the glue just like you did before. Do coat number two, that one. That. Same thing here. Same thing here. And second coat. Get my brush off so I don't get it all over the table. And that is C. We'll put C in there. Position and H. Oh. H goes in there. Now those are position. We'll come over here and do these two as well. When you're doing this, I'll show you how much glue you want to put on in your first one. Okay, then you have an idea of what you need to get. Quantity wise, it's kind of hard to show you on the video. So just ask for help on this and I'll just show you the amount of glue that you need to put in to your mortises. All right, there's that. This is where you might need the extra set of hands. So, we have this one, that's good, that's ready to go, and this one. So tilt this one up, hopefully your front and back stay in, then tilt this one up, get the bottom corners in place, so I got G in place, I got, got D in place, it's kind of holding together. Don't worry about squeezing it together, the clamps will do that if you need to. Put that one down, take this. Again, position the clamps so that they're putting pressure right on your center. Okay, like so. And like so. Check your diagonals. Why do we have 712 this way the last time? We have 712. 
I think this way we had 713. So as long as you're within about three mils, everything should work out good. So that's a little, oh, that's got to squeeze together just a little bit. Try that. Oh, I see what's going on here. It's hung up. There we go, 713. That's what we're looking for. All right, that's got to sit overnight. One thing you can do while it's still wet is just check that your legs are the same distance apart. This one's towing in a little bit. I'm just going to push on it and see if I can get them the same. That one's good. This one needs to be up here where it's rigid. 13 and a light eighth. 13 and a light eighth. Light 8. There we go. That's glued up. We'll let that sit overnight.